Monday, July 1st, somewhere around about 8.30 in the evening. I just spent the last 15 minutes slightly adjusting the azimuth and declination mechanicals and redoing three star alignments to the east and the west. Although I do not anticipate doing any western studies this evening because I am basically going to be resuming the ascent along the core plain, uh, central plane of the Milky Way galaxy, which I started last night, beginning at about minus 35 degrees near the tail of Scorpio and Shaula. And I went up through Sagittarius, and then I got as far as that in the first phase, about 33 studies done. I'll be doing the middle phase now, which will take me through um, pretty much Scutum and then Aquila, and that's probably about as far as I'll get. And the final phase will take me up and to the northeast into the foot of Cepheus if I can squeeze it in through the observatory with the roof lining of the house. All of that will take place beginning around 10.15 this very evening. As long as the sky holds up, there are a few clouds floating by. The sky does not look perfectly transparent. Last night was actually a fairly good sky. This could be comparable, I'm not sure, but there's a lot of water vapor in the atmosphere. We shall see. Okay, hey, it is now 10.10 in the evening. I thought we'd start off with a little bit of a view of Messier 56. It's a globular cluster between Lyra and Cygnus. I'll give you some data on it, because we've got about five or 10 more minutes before Sky Dark has truly arrived. You can see some, I can still see some color in the sky. Messier 56, a globular cluster in Lyra, magnitude 8.3. Five arc minutes in size, fairly distant, 32,900 light years away. It's at right ascension 19, 1635, and it's at plus 30 degrees, 11 minutes and 5 seconds. No, it does not fall on the plane, the galactic plane of the Milky Way, but I thought we'd start off with a nice little view, followed by another Messier. And, of course, how could we possibly ignore Messier 27? Also, nicely centered in the field of view because I synchronized the scope to Messier 56. I would show you the ring nebula, except at 128 flood, 42 decibels. It's a bit overexposed. Uh, it looks best at about a, a 64 um, basically a 64 shutter speed, and uh, which is equivalent to roughly a 12-inch scope. Anything beyond that, and it starts to swamp out any visible detail and texture. So there's our look at the dumbbell. And I think I will go ahead and get a start on the second phase of the Galactic Plane series, which began last night down near Shaula and Scorpio, and it proceeded to Sagittarius. We covered about 30 plus studies, and tonight we're going to cover the middle third, which will probably be somewhere between Scutum and Altair in terms of constellations. But there is a very decent view of the Dumbbell in the Planetary Nebula. Our first study on the list of a galactic plane related deep sky studies is NGC 6537. It is in fact in Sagittarius. It's a planetary nebula. I'm waiting for the data to come up. I'm hoping the handset, there it is. Planetary nebula in Sagittarius. Magnitude 12, a mere 5 arc seconds in diameter. The central star is magnitude 19.5 and it is 2,900 light years distant. We're at right ascension 1805.13 and declination minus 1950.34. And it should look for a 
pretty much in the center of the screen. That might be at uh, 12, magnitude 12. It's going to be brighter than that. Probably one of these brighter stars right here on the screen. Once again, not a star, but a planetary nebula. And there is our first view in part two of our galactic plane wanderings series. NGC 6567 is another planetary nebula in Sagittarius, slightly brighter and larger, magnitude 11.5, 11, 11 by 7 arc seconds. The central star would otherwise be resolvable, visible at magnitude 15, except it's going to be enshrouded with that planetary nebulosity. Planetary is 11,800 light years distant. Uh, that would place it about a, well, a little less than half the way towards the galactic core from our own location in the Orion spiral arm of the Milky Way. We're at right ascension to 1813.45 and a declination of minus 1904.34. A nice starry region of the Milky Way for sure. We are still hanging out in Sagittarius with NGC 6589, this time not a planetary, but a nebula. 15 minutes in size, so basically it's pretty much included in this entire field. It's an emissive type of nebula 5,500 light years distant. And at my viewing angle, I'm not quite able to really make out whether the nebulosity is visible around any of those stars up there. We'll just have to look for it tomorrow. We also are a little shy of sky dark, although we're very close. I see a faint blue to the sky, but that could be because of cloud, uh, very thin water vapor in the atmosphere. 65, 89, Nebula, Sagittarius. What we have here is a very nice sprinkling of faint stars in, as an open cluster in Sagittarius, NGC 6603, faintish, magnitude 11.5, a mere five arc minutes in size, some 100 stars, so a fairly robust cluster. 11,700 light years distant, the brightest stars are magnitude 14. This is a class Roman numeral 1 and numeric one cluster, which means basically the stars are of similar uh, luminosity and they're fairly compactly presented. Very sweet looking open cluster. We're at right ascension 18, 18, 26 and declination minus 18, 24, 24. Okay, here we have NGC 6611. Should be recognizable. It's a nebula and open cluster in Serpens. Has another designation, Messier 16. It's magnitude 6, about 7 arc minutes in size. There are some 60 stars in the cluster. Brightest are of magnitude 11. It's a class 2-3, 5,800 light years distant. And I think you can make out what the common name for this cluster is, and the way I usually determine that is because of this very uh, bird-like feature here with the wings outspread and its claws, talons forward. So otherwise what we're looking at is the Eagle Nebula. Right Ascension 18, 18, 48, declination minus 13, 48, 24, nicely centered on the screen. Nebulos, uh, brightish nebulosity. It's not specifying whether it's emissive or not. I suspect it is. It's at the blue end of the spectrum. And it's instead of white, but that could be just coloration on the screen. And juxtaposed against a nice open cluster of brightish stars. NGC 6611. Okay, here we have another open cluster in Sagittarius. We are spending a good deal of time here. 
This particular cluster is also a Messier 18, magnitude 6.9, 9 arc minutes in size, some 20 stars. They all look pretty much the same brightness. Uh, the brightest stars are magnitude 8.6. It's a 2-3, 4,200 light years distant. Bright ascension 18, 19, 58, with a declination of minus 17 degrees, 6 minutes and 7 seconds. Cluster looks kind of shovel-esque, doesn't it? A handle with the spade at the top, but we've got a few of the distracting stars around it. And there's a way of identifying NGC 6613, otherwise known as Messier 18. Another easily recognized study from the Messier catalog, Messier 17, <coughs> described as a nebula and open cluster in Sagittarius with the new general catalog entry of 6618. The nebula and cluster is magnitude 6, some 11 arc minutes in size, and some 40 stars. Uh, the brightest of which are magnitude 9.3. It's a class 3-3, three, three, so the stars are spread out of disparate magnitudes, 4,200 light years distant. Right ascension, 18, 20, 47. Declination, minus 16, 10, 18. And I keep, keep in mind, as we view this, that we've now seen a couple of very nice nebulosities, the eagle and the swan, and they're right along the spine of the midline of the galactic core and um, region extending out in the directions. So we're on the median of the Gallic Milky Way galaxy, which is, of course, the main thrust of our studies last night, tonight, and potentially again next evening, if we get decent seeing conditions. Oh, here's another beauty. We've got a nice open cluster with some nebulosity. NGC 6645, magnitude of 8.5, 11, I mean 10 arc minutes in size, some 40 stars, brightest of which are magnitude 12. It's a class 3, 1. So the stars are fairly disparate in magnitude, but reasonably condensed. 4,100 light years distant. Now the nebulosity we're seeing on the screen seems to have disappeared. That may have just been residuals from the swan. So this is purely an open cluster. Was a nice ghostly effect though. We're at right ascension 183237 and declination minus 1653, getting a very nice field view of the center line of the Milky Way galaxy and this splendid open cluster in Sagittarius. What we have here is an adventitious open cluster in Sagittarius, which wasn't in the Wiltirian chart, but is on the handset as I was, uh, as I was strumming through it. I happened to notice NGC 6647 open cluster Sagittarius Magnitude is 8, 7,200 light years distant. There's no designation to this particular cluster. And you do get a sense of some condensation of a cluster in this area here. Uh, intriguing, uh, but perhaps maybe a little misstated. But anyway, it's a very nice field, and I decided to include it in this series of studies along the galactic midline meridian. We're at right ascension 183249, declination minus 171342, and we are getting a nice starry field. There does seem to be a little clutch of stars right in this region here that may be suggestive of an open cluster. This is most definitely an open cluster. It's also the first one we're seeing outside of Sagittarius. This one's in Scutum. Magnitude 8.9. Six arc minutes in size with some 50 stars. <clears throat> the brightest of which are magnitude 11.6. It's a 2-2, so it's a good example of a moderately disparate star magnitudes, moderately distributed in the sky. 
4,500 light years distant, where right ascension 1833-27, declination minus 10, 24, 12, and we do expect to get beyond the celestial equator to this evening and start throwing some positive numbers for declination. But here is our look at NGC 6649. NGC 6664 is an open cluster in Scutum. You can see there's brighter stars broadly distributed through the field. It's magnitude 7.8, some 16 arc minutes in size, so it should just pretty much be encompassed by the, the presentation on the TFT display. There are roughly 50 stars, the brightest of which are magnitude 10.1. It's a class 3-2, 3,800 light years distant, with a right ascension of 1836-33, declination of minus 8-13-12. Here is what appears to be another broadly distributed with brightish 10th magnitude stars open cluster in Scutum, NGC 6682. The only object information is about 18 arc minutes in size, so it pretty much fills this screen. Light ascension 1839-37, declination minus 4, 48, 48. So we are getting pretty close to the celestial equator where it bisects the meridian of the central meridian line of the Milky Way galaxy. NGC 6683 is another open cluster in Scutum. Magnitude 9.4, 11 arc minutes in size. I'm not quite sure how anyone decided that this was an open cluster. There's about 20 stars here, the brightest of which are magnitude 11.7. It's a class one, which probably has to, once again, I may have these reversed, but it seems like all the stars are roughly the same magnitude two, which means they're broadly distributed uh, in a moderate sense. 3,900 light years distant. We're at right ascension 1842.12 and minus six degrees, 17 minutes and zero seconds. That is a highly populated field, and I'm not sure, once again, how anyone decided that there was actually, it reminds me of Messier 24, which is a broad window of bright stars that you're looking through where, where the cold dark matter of space has parted to reveal deeper space towards the galactic core. Anyway, there's our look, 60, NGC 6683. Well, in NGC 6694, you can see what you expect to see in an open cluster. This one's also referred to as Messier 26, so it was much more obvious even to Messier that this was a cluster, although he did list Messier 24. It's magnitude 8, 15 arc minutes in size with some 30 stars, the brightest of which are magnitude 10.3. It's a class 1-1 which seems rather odd to me, because that would typically mean that the cluster is fairly compact and all the stars are of roughly the same brightness. But this one spills out over 15 arc minutes according to the handset, which means uh, it's not as compact as it would appear towards its core. The cluster is 5200 light years distant. Right ascension 1845-18, declination minus 9, 23, zero. But a very respectable open cluster it is. NGC 6704 is also clearly a open cluster. And it's located in Scutum, faint, magnitude 9.2 and small, six arc minutes in size, some 30 stars, the brightest of which are magnitude 12.2. It's a class 1 Three, so the stars are fairly disparate, although they're fairly compact. 9,700 light years distant. That's some 20 times the distance of the Pleiades. The right ascension is 18, 15, 18 hours, 50 minutes and 45 seconds, with a declination of minus 5, 12, 18. So we're still a ways from breaking the celestial equator and heading into the northern hemisphere of the sky. 
Okay, what we're seeing here is NGC 6705, an open cluster in Scutum, and you can tell that this is also a Messier study. Number 11, magnitude 5.8, 14 arc minutes in size, some 500 stars are present. That's a very large number for an open cluster, rivaling the Pleiades, which are much, much closer. This cluster is 6,100 light years distance. Its brightest star is magnitude 8, and it is a class Roman numeral 1, 2, which means 1, Roman numeral 1, very condensed, 2, stellar magnitudes are fairly consistent. It's at right ascension 185105 and declination minus 6, 16, 12, and this is a very fine cluster. Um, with has so many stars, it will probably last quite a while, even though it's in the direction of the galactic core along the mid-plane of the galaxy. It probably will resist being picked apart for several, probably hundreds of millions of years by gravitational tidal forces. We have just made a very large leap north. I suspect we'll head south again because the NGC catalog is set up based on right ascension, not declination. We're at NGC 6709, open cluster in Aquila, our first study there. Magnitude 6.7, 13 arc minutes in size with some 40 stars, the brightest of which is magnitude 9.1. It's a class 3-2. 3,500 light years distant. Right ascension 185118, declination plus 10 degrees, 20 minutes and 6 seconds. That's a very nice view, but up against the background stars of the Milky Way, doesn't quite pop as well as our last study, Messier 11. Still, very nice open cluster. First one in Aquila, the Eagle. Predictably, we've dropped down into Scutum once again, and probably below the celestial equator for this fine globular cluster, NGC 6712, the first of the evening in Scutum, as mentioned. Magnitude 8.2, 4.3 arc minutes in size. The brightest star is our magnitude 13.3. It's a class 9, which means uh, the stars are fairly spaced out. 22,000 light years distant puts it into the uh, M13 range and M92. The right ascension is 1853.04 and declination is minus 842.19. Always love to see globular clusters. Again, this one in particular, against a rich background of Milky Way stars as it lies right along this, the meridian of our Milky Way galaxy, the balancing point between its northern and southern hemispheres. With a few glorious exceptions, such as the ring and dumbbell nebulas, most planetary nebula are kind of hard to pick out in a crowd, and so is this one. This is NGC 6741, planetary in Aquila, magnitude 12, small, 9 by 7 arc seconds. Central star of magnitude 14.7, so I suspect the star is going to dominate the light, although the total magnitudinal brightness of the planetary is 2.7 magnitudes brighter which is typically, I think, something about seven or eight times brighter than the central star itself. The planetary is located 12,200 light years away. We're at right ascension 1902.37, declination 0, minus 0, 2657. So very close to the celestial equator and along the dividing meridian line of the disk of the Milky Way. Way. Okay, we're going to watch NGC 6755 develop on the screen. It's an open cluster in Aquila. I'll get you the data. does seem to have some cluster-like aspects, although the stars tend to trail a little bit here. 
As you see, 6755 is an open cluster in Aquila, magnitude 7.5, 15 arc minutes in size, but 100 stars. So we really are thinking of this entire region as being part of the open cluster. Brightest star is magnitude 10.2. We're at class 4.2. That means, even though it's relatively compact, the star magnitudes are quite disparate. You can see them all over the screen. 4,600 light years distant. We're at right ascension 1907.49, declination 416. Plus 4 degrees and 16 minutes, as we might expect in the eagle constellation of Aquila. NGC 6756 in Aquila is an indistinct open cluster. Magnitude 10.6, four arc minutes in size, some 40 stars. Pretty sure that's where it's located. Brightest stars are magnitude 13. It's a class 1, 2, so it's fairly tight, but the stars are of disparate magnitudes. 4,900 light years distant. Bright Ascension 1908-42, Declination 4-42-18. There's our look. No open cluster here. We are seeing something that looks a little like a luminous Christmas tree, doesn't it? NGC 6760, Globular Cluster in Aquila. Magnitude 9.1, 2.4 arc minutes in size. The brightest stars are magnitude 15.6. It's a class 9 of 12. Although it looks pretty condensed, that may just be the core. 24,000 light years distant. Right ascension 1911.11, declination 1 degree, 1 minute and 49 seconds. That's a pretty nice view, very distinct against the background of well-populated stars along the axis of the Milky Way, longitudinal axis of the Milky Way galaxy. Oh boy, you gotta love NGC 6781. Very expansive planetary nebula in Aquila. Overall, uh, brightness is magnitude 11.8, but very large, 111 by 109 arc seconds. The central star should be visible, although it may be clouded out a little bit, at magnitude 16.9. This planetary nebula is almost as large as, is about as large as the ring, but is 2300 light years distant, so roughly maybe a little further out than the ring nebula. Right Ascension is 1918.28 and Declination is 632.19. I'm going to leave this sweetie up on the screen as I search out the next study along the uh, spines of the Milky Way. Just about to launch to NGC 6800. Well, we just swung very seriously north to NGC 6800 as an open cluster in Volpecula. The cluster is about five arc minutes in size with 20 stars, the brightest of which is magnitude 10. It's a class 3-2, 3300 light years distant. Right ascension 192707, declination plus 25 degrees, 8 minutes, and 24 seconds. There's our view. Swinging south again, but still remaining in Volpecula the Fox, it's NGC 6802, open cluster. Magnitude 8.8, .8, smallest 3.2 arc minutes with 50 stars, brightest of which are magnitude 12.9. What a beautiful sprinkling of stars that is. It's class 3-1, 3,700 light years distant. Right ascension, 1930-35, declination, 20-15-42. And that is a very sweet view with a very strong sense of, of length to this cluster. 
but very nice. NGC 6803, unlike the previous planetary nebula, is very indistinct. This one's located in Aquila. Magnitude 11, a mere four arc seconds in size. The central star is magnitude 14, 17,200 light years distant. We're at right ascension 1931-16, declination 10:03:22, And your guess is as good as mine. Okay, a planetary nebula that is quite distinct as such. NGC 6804, Planetary and Aquila, magnitude 12.4, largish, over a minute, 63 arc seconds by 50. Central star, magnitude 14.2, 5600 light years distant. We're at right ascension 1931-35, declination plus 9, 13, 31. And I'm going to let you hold that view while I go and search out our next study along the spine of the Milky Way. Our next study isn't on my list. It may not actually be within five degrees of the spine, but I suspect it is. But the reason I want to call it up is because it's a galaxy. Wow, we're looking all the way through the Milky Way at NGC 6814, Galaxy and Aquila. Brightish, magnitude 11.2, and largest 3.5 by 3.5 arc minutes. Spiral with a bar, lowercase bc, which puts it two and a half times removed from lenticular. This galaxy also displays a ring. Ordinarily, we might expect to see it. At, at magnitude 11.2, the ring should be somewhere around magnitude 15. This galaxy is 70 million light years distant, located at right ascension 1942-40 and declination minus 10, 1926. Because of that far southern declination, I suspect it's probably more than five degrees away from the spine, the, the meridian of the Milky Way galaxy, but it is worth having a view anyway. So enjoy. I will continue this as I press, oh yeah, as you see 6815, I believe, is the study and we do want to capture along the meridian of the Milky Way. NGC 6815 is an open cluster in Bopecula, smallish, three arc minutes in size. It's a class four two. And if I can make it out, I have to shift around quite a bit. Sorry for that. It is 6,600 light years distant, right ascension 1940-42, declination 2647-54. Open cluster, NGC 6815. NGC 6820 is a nebula in Volpecula, magnitude 15, but way too faint. 40 by 30 arc minutes. I doubt we'll see much of this. 6,000 light years distant. Unless it's got some kind of condensed region on the screen. Uh, uh, there might be a few spots of luminosity. I'm thinking right there. Anyway, so we did see something of it. Light ascension 1942-28, declination 2305-17. I'll allow it to continue to develop as I would for my next study on the list. Off to NGC 6823. NGC 6823 is a nebulae and open cluster in Volpecula. Now, I can't see the screen well enough to tell whether or not there's any nebulosity there. Collective magnitude 7.1, 12 arc minutes in size, sub 30 stars, the brightest of which is 8.8. .8. It's a class 1-3, 10,400 light years distant. Light Ascension 1943 09, Declination 2318. So 
So there's our view of a quite obvious open cluster. But what about that nebulosity? We'll have to check it out in the manana. All right, NGC 6830 is obviously interesting to space bugs. It's an open cluster in Vopecula, magnitude 7.9, 12 arc minutes in size, some 20 stars, the rightest of which are magnitude 9.9. It's always interesting to check the delta between the total magnitude of cluster and its brightest components. In this case, the magnitudinal difference is about 2, which is suggestive of the fact that there are very few stars in the cluster. It's a class 2, 2, 5300 light years distant, with a right ascension of 1950-59 and a declination of 2306. And there is our view of an obvious cluster, but against a background of numerous fainter stars. We've now entered into the beak of Cygnus the Swan for NGC 6834. Cygnus does fly to the south, so it must be winter time, although it is actually currently summer. 6834 is an open cluster in Cygnus, magnitude 7.8, tight though, five arc minutes in size, so about a third of the screen on the vertical axis. Some 50 stars, the brightest of which are 9.6 magnitude. It's a class 2-2, 6,700 light years distant. Right ascension, 1952-12. Declination, almost 30 degrees, plus 29, 24, 30. We have come quite a ways since we started out at about minus 10 or 15 degrees in declination early in this evening's series of NGCs along the spine of the Milky Way. NGC 6842 is a planetary nebula in Vopecula. No, it is not the Dumbbell Planetary. Because this one is magnitude 13.1, although it's largest, 53 by 48. Oh yes, it's a beauty. I can see it right in the middle of the screen arc seconds in size. Brightest central, the star, central star is magnitude 14.5. It's located about 4,500 light years distant, so about twice the distance of the Ring Nebula. Its right ascension is 1955.02 and declination is plus 29.17.20. I just love it when those planetaries actually show us something of their annular or dumbbell natures. Very nice view. I'll leave it up on the screen as I search out what is likely to be our final study. Unless I come across something that, like a galaxy, which is incidental. So. Okay, one final planetary nebula for the evening, and this one is along the spine of the Milky Way, and let's go have a look at it. You, of course, know this planetary nebula as Messier 27, also known as the Dumbbell. But it has another name that was entered by Dreyer in the new general catalog of the 1890s, NGC 6853. Planetary Nebula in Vopecula, magnitude 7.3, large, 480 by 340 arc seconds, with a central star of magnitude 14.1, standing there right in the middle for all to see. This planetary is 860 light years distant, which accounts for its size because it's about half to a third the distance of the Ring Nebula. Its right ascension is 1959.36. Declination 224315. Ordinarily, I would say let's carpe knocked him out on such a beautiful view, but I love the Crescent Nebula. 
Let's see how she looks tonight. So against the ghostly remains of the dumbbell nebula, we see the crescent nebula in formation on the screen. Very nice view. I'd say as good as the view we got last evening when we also exited out on NGC 6 triple eight. I can give you the specs on it. But I would ask you, do you think 6 triple A is going to be part of tomorrow's final series in this summer series of Along the Spine of the Milky Way? As you see, 6 triple A is a nebula sickness, 92 10, 20 by 10 the mark finish. And this is the 4,800 light years distant, right ascension 2012-06, the declination 38-21-17, and with that I am going to say, carpet, not